Uh, welcome to our next series uh, uh, of webinars and today we are focusing on the PR and popcorn industry. Uh, as we know, all the sectors are going through tough times uh, because of COVID and uh, this industry too is going through its own uh, set of challenges. But the topic for today is how are PR agencies bracing for a post-COVID business environment and with me quickly I'll introduce who are on the panel as we've already seen but for those who have logged in. We have Mr. Nitin Mantri, uh, President of PRCAI, PRCAI and uh, Group CEO of Avian B. Uh, we have Mr. Kunal Kishore, Founder of Value360. We have uh, Mr. Udit Bhattak, Director of Media Mantra. We have Ms. Taranjit Ratan, Founder of UPS PR. We have Mr. Vineet Handa, Founder and CEO of Kaizen. Uh, we have Ruby Sinha, who will be joining us, uh, MD of Commune uh, Brand Communications. We have Mr. Aman Gupta, MD, uh, SPAG Asia, and my co-moderator would be Karan, who will be asking questions. And uh, as I said, we'll be taking audience questions as well. So um, I can start with Mr. Mantri. Uh, Mr. Mantri, are you? I can't see him here right now. Um, I'm right here. OK, OK. He's all there. Uh, so my first question to you is that uh, uh, PR and Copcom sector is uh, going through a lot of challenges and as an association, at the level of association, uh, how are you looking at uh, tiding over this uh, uh, you know, time collectively in terms of giving motivation to people who are associated with this uh, uh, domain and in terms of uh, ensuring that we are all prepared to collectively tide through it and safety land on the other side? Um, yeah, good question. I think, um... Uh, yeah, as an association, we're doing multiple things. I think uh, uh, there are three levels, really. One is talking to government and uh, other stakeholders, regulators, etc., uh, where we are uh, offering our help uh, to help them. We are, uh, we've sent a letter to the Ministry of Health. We are actually in talks with YouGov, uh, sorry, MyGov, to do uh, some work around the Arugya Situ app. So we are doing that at one level. For uh, our for staff of our members, we're looking at, we've done a lot of mental health campaigns. We've uh, done campaigns around, uh, you know, social distancing, etc. cetera. Um, we are also looking at uh, impact study uh, to talk about what the impact on the industry will be. So there are various things that the association is doing. And of course, we talk to each other every week. We talk to each other every week to share ideas and, and stuff. And those ideas actually help people also develop their own strategy to go ahead. There's no doubt it's a tough time. It's a going to be a challenging year. And I guess every organization will make its own collective decision on what, what they will do on to tide over this crisis. But it, I think there's, I just want to say it's a, going to be a tough year to be prepared for any, anything and everything. But, uh, but the silver lining really is that I believe the industry is going to find a way to overcome these hurdles and become stronger and relevant more over time. As before this conversation started, you know, we were chatting on how comms has become a you know business critical need with clients approaching firms to work on their crisis and cop comms and employee engagement. In fact, a recent survey by Provoke said that 82% of the agency surveyed said brands were reaching out to them for crisis counsel and contingency plans for their campaigns, while over half the in-house professional surveys said that they will not cut budget, but that's just half. So there's still half who might cut. So in this um, unprecedented world of COVID-19, we should therefore focus really on providing excellent uninterrupted service for our clients. The core, and I think at the core, uh, our role will be to guide brands in how they can help communicate in a crisis and sorry, help communities in a crisis. So I think purpose-driven comms will become very important. Thanks, I'll stop here. Uh, Kunal, I want to come to you and ask you the same uh, question. Uh, in this tough uh, time, uh, wherein uh, we are seeing a lot of stress on uh, companies, uh, how are you keeping the employees motivated? That's a very critical part of uh, actually um, is testing uh, us on multiple levels as uh, business leaders. How are you ensuring you know to keep them motivated and uh, help them tide over this tough time? So, um, actually. Uh, none of us were ever prepared for something that is happening to us uh, today. Uh, but as quickly as anybody could possibly adapt, our industry also adapted and same is our organization where uh, 
we actually ensure that uh, the continuity of work and seamless service offering should be key to our uh, service delivery right now. While doing that, we also uh, have an understanding and we do empathize that in this scenario, the in a situation where we are all living in isolation, uh, we are living where we are not part of uh, our work which is uh, beyond our home. Uh, we also understand that there are few people who are actually living all alone where they have to manage their homework and also work from home and manage that there is uh, a business continuity in terms of seamless delivery. Uh, we are empathetic to that and we are largely, we are, uh, from time to time, we are actually trying to do things like we've actually, we've done um, uh, a session with a, uh, 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 the psychologist uh, to largely talk and have an interactive session where people can address their issue, which was there were issues related to kids at home, there were issues related to uh, working in isolation, all those were part of it, which happened yesterday. Then we actually tried doing, getting every team together in terms of some fun sessions where we did Zumba sessions, we did sessions where we did stand up act from within the team. So we are actually trying to engage people. We're trying to get them to feel uh, that we are all part of one unit. Uh, while we uh, we know that situation is grim, we're trying to keep our hopes high. Like Nitin said, that um, PR becomes a critical part of all the enterprise today because this is the only function that they can't uh, they they can't avoid for a for a even uh, giving example of even the air, airline companies that we are representing, which are right now has suffered massively. They're also looking at PR as a very important tool to communicate with the stakeholders. So I feel PR as a whole, I think while there is, there would be an impact, but I strongly feel that there is what we are seeing today is uh, that PR will even become strongly out of it once, uh, things starts becoming normal. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Udit, uh, same question to you. Uh, I mean, how are you ensuring this uh, you know, the collective motivation? So I think um, if you actually look at it, PR is needed. This is the time when PR is needed the most right now. You know, uh, because if we actually look at, uh, you know, we should be empathetic towards the clients. Because, you know, if you actually look at they require, you know, they require to talk. Communication is very important because they can't allow messaging to stop at all, right? And today, you know, uh, sometimes it is not just about communication. It is also about, you know, talking with the client on a regular basis. So for example, today I, you know, in the past one week, I've received around 10 to 12 calls where, you know, clients are just calling me and talking about their business as a whole, right? As, as an industry as a whole. So, you know, it is important for everyone to understand that and talk to the client. So this is what I keep telling my team as well. You know, we should not leave this. We should just keep talking to the client, understand what, uh, you know, what problem they are in. Because to be very honest, we are still in far, far better position than what client clients are today. They have got bigger problems to solve, right? Their entire uh, supply chain uh, is disturbed currently. So, uh, so we need to talk to the client. Uh, make sure that, you know, there is some kind of messaging which is going out for sure. Uh, personally speaking, I have spoken with a lot of them and uh, if required, we have taken some uh, steps wherein, you know, uh, we have reduced retainers, wherein we have asked them for deferred payments as well. So, you know, it is very, very important for every firm. Today. If we have to become from agency to a consultancy, this is the time to do it. This is the right time to talk as a consultant and not talk as an agency for sure. Uh, uh, beneath the uh, unique challenges, nobody was prepared for this and uh, unforeseen situation, difficult time. I mean, how, how, what is your strategy? I mean, how as a, as a set up business set up are you doing this? Yeah, mute. Hi, sorry. Uh, so, thanks, Royal. Uh, <clears throat> so, like Nathan spoke, Kunal spoke, you know, a uh, couple of things which I really feel at uh, this stage I would want to highlight. One, to start with, no problem is infinite. So, that is the premise where 
we as Kaizen and we as an industry, we are starting. I must say uh, the PRCAI right now, the and I'm just talking largely on an industry level, the kind of work which is happening at PRCI is commendable. I never thought, I'm, I'm sure no other industry body would be so active the way we are. And thanks to Nitin, Anoop, everybody, Jyoti, everybody, I think uh, this is a great time and we are learning from each other. There's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, experience sharing. There's a lot of discussion on, on each and every topic, whether it's government, whether it's uh, uh, you know the employees or whether it's clients, and and I I believe there is a lot of synergies around which we are picking it up, and I'm I'm really happy about that. Now, coming back to uh, Kaizen as a specific uh, case study, we are mid-sized company. Uh, what we have done internally to face this problem is, I believe, if uh, for an example, if we were uh, or I was talking to the uh, team members say once or twice in a month. Right now, I'm talking to them every week. Uh, the mandate is very clear, even from the second line to third line, that they need to connect with everybody in their teams, respective teams, in intra-team, uh, almost every day. So there is this very strong connect amongst people. Now, these are tough times. People are working in isolation. People are, uh, you know, have their own issues at home, uh, which probably we are not aware of. So it's, it's not that, uh, you know, a comfortable time from the people's point of view. And I think uh, what we have done internally is one, we have given a, a mandate that there won't be, uh, of course, there are rationalizing of salaries depending on the businesses and depending on, you know, it's sort of a larger restructuring which we have done. Uh, and that too is very transparent. And I believe, uh, you know, it is very important that, uh, at this stage, what we've done is our external communication, which is to the world, to the clients versus internal communication, they are all same. So there is no difference between, uh, you know, that communication strategy, what we are talking to the clients, we are talking to the team in the same manner and same. So I think that's another thing which has helped us. Transparency has helped us. The third thing what we've done is, uh, is, is, is uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> engaging. And there are some, you know, each organization would have some people who are always at a receiving end, you know, that bottom of the pyramid. Even in this restructuring side, there are certain issues which have come up and we have committed them from our side, from our personal side, that any need which come across uh, or uh, arise for them, we'll, we'll be happy to support them. So I think there are a lot of these personal things which we are doing to make sure that things, and, and I personally believe we can sail through this problem only and only if our teams are with us. We will rise stronger and better if this team is with us. And I think there is nobody who would not agree with me on that point. And I think that's where the first priority comes in. And then we move to the client. We have adjusted a lot of business models according to the client's need. We understand uh, their revenues have hit, have hit uh, badly. So there are all kinds of matter, uh, models which we have worked around with clients. And the other thing which we have done is uh, there are clients who have gone for, uh, you know, uh, for a, say uh, two months, three months, uh, retainer recess. We are trying to give a basic minimal services to them as well. So we are not discontinuing uh, engaging with them. We are not discontinuing uh, probably as smaller services, which we all do is sending them the daily, uh, you know, the news tracking. So there are a lot of these smaller things which we are doing and I'm getting into very technical stuff which at times really help uh, you know, organizations and uh, companies or the clients to at least understand the value of this. Right. Right. And, and, yes, sorry, sorry. Sorry. and the okay. final point, okay. sorry. sorry, this is the final point which I probably want to, uh, want to talk about is, is I think uh, uh, the PR will never go out of picture. PR uh, uh, was needed. BC, which is before COVID, is required even now, probably more, and, and it would be required post-COVID as well, and as probably will get stronger. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to understand your thoughts on this, of, uh, of dealing with this unprecedented situation. Uh, okay, so I think well, uh, most of my colleagues have already talked about it. Um, uh, the way we look at it is that 
a pandemic like COVID-19, like any other humanitarian crisis, uh, brings in a huge change and a huge level of uncertainty. And I think that's true for every industry, every individual and every organization which is out there. What will emerge after the COVID-19 as a society and as a business ecosystem uh, will be very different from where we are. So I think what we what is happening right now is at three levels. At an industry level, I think this is the time which PRCI as an industry body got everybody together. And I think that's something which is helping each of us to work together, uh, share experiences, share ideas, and to ensure that the industry per se uh, remains together, collaborates to really you know, move to the next level. And then there are companies who are trying to find their own platforms or they're trying to found their own strategies, how they want to really move uh, uh, things forward. But the basic idea is that there has to be a, a business continuity. And if you look at it from a business continuity, you will have your strategies around your client engagement. You will have your strategies around how do you want to keep your employees uh, inspired and engaged. And you're also looking at what the future may look like and you're doing a scenario mapping and based on the scenario mapping what kind of business strategies could you evolve i think this is also the time to look at what kind of innovations uh, uh, could come in you know what the future may look like and i'm sure most of my peers would be really looking at what that uh, future is quite uncertain but i think we are all prepared to look at so yes, it is uh, a time challenging, uh, but again, uh, and we will do whatever is required to overcome the challenges and ensure that the business uh, remains, uh, you know, ongoing. And you know, we as an industry, uh, communication remains integral to the to the business. And I think everybody has said, clients have come back uh, to us. So while there might be a, a short term change in their way of looking at the world, but you know, once we are, you know, over this little, you know, hill or little hurdle, uh, communication is going to be one of the core aspects they will be focusing on. Before I come to Taranjit, uh, I just wanted to share the, the tweeting live, the live tweets on hashtag eForum webinar. Uh, so I request everyone watching this to keep tweeting. Uh, Taranjit, your thoughts on this? Uh, how, are you, how are you keeping your staff motivated? Quick words. Okay, uh, so um, we have never been busier. If any industry was ever prepared to survive a crisis, it was PR. We have always been, you know, preparing crisis documentation, setting our clients up for crises. I think we were almost halfway there when this crisis hit. And uh, we thought working from home, if everybody thought working from home was going to be a part holiday, then the PR guys have it different. Yeah, we've never been busier. We've been up from nine to nine. Um, and working throughout. So that also puts a lot of stress on the team. Uh, it also means, you know, our entire scope of work has actually expanded drastically from not just doing regular PR activities, but also internal communication, uh, social listening, uh, SMS, uh, you know, sensitization, all of that. So it, it means that every member of the team is getting involved with what is happening on a day to day basis with a particular client. As far as motivation is concerned, yeah, we have, uh, you know, we've done a lot of interesting uh, WhatsApp sessions, um, Facebook lives to make sure that everybody is connected. But one of the key things that we try and do is every week, we make it a point to have a video call with everyone so that everyone just gets around together. You know, this is like the um, office water cooler. Yeah. So we all get out, get on a video call together, whether it's a Zoom call or a Google call and make sure that we see each other and talk to each other about the issues and challenges that we are facing. While the first week and the second week was okay, third, by the third week, you, know, you really start seeing the stress come out. So apart from me personally being involved with every team member and speaking to them and making sure that they are fine, especially the ones that are staying alone away from home, uh, it's essential that all of us get together as a group and talk to each other, see each other, and have a little bit of a laugh to make sure that everybody is, you know, um, Happy and round. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Ruby joined us lately, but I just want to rephrase the question that we're talking about uh, how are we keeping the 
workforce motivated to in this crisis and we're just understanding and listening to individual approaches so just how are you uh, ensuring making sure that your workforce stays motivated to in this crisis you know rohil this is a crisis situation but most of our clients are very active right now so uh, the way uh, we are trying to ensure that uh, most of our people they at least stay connected with each other right from uh, top down everybody the team every day have prop ongoing team calls probably on a daily basis see if someone has a problem be it from bandwidth issues or any other personal issues we are trying to solve it we start something called a friday session where we get the team to come together and just discuss anything outside work as a team or share some videos as while they are working from home etc just ensure that there is somebody for every uh, somebody for everyone uh, when they have their moments when they need to speak to somebody somebody in the team mm. right 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 perfect um nilda i want to come to you uh, uh, and after this round uh, karan would be asking the questions i also want to just remind that uh, we can hashtag equal and better uh tell me nitin uh, do you think uh, you know pr companies pr agencies will have a bigger role to play uh, in a post covid world because you know everybody will try to reposition as we know the business are going through tough times and they have to rejig the entire landscape will get rejig do you think pr agencies that means would have a lot of work on their hands uh, it's not as uh, gloomy as it seems to be right audio is here i totally believe so um i think um, post covid uh, agencies will have uh, will come back stronger um see what is going to happen is from from a couple of perspectives some clients um will have to look at client engagement from a different perspective the rules the engagement rules might change but the need will probably go up um and i do urge a lot of people to read paul holmes article on post covid Where he talks about how three four area of on three four areas where where uh, PR firms will really uh, uh, march ahead. Um, the, the thing is that we'll have to definitely go a little beyond the scope of work as we start going to post COVID. Ensure that you know all our offerings kind of adapt to this change. Um, there'll be there, there will be uh, uh, people will realign the strategies as in our clients, and therefore we have to adapt. they to their challenges you know what udit was saying earlier that they are all going their whole supply chain is disrupted they are all going to look at their business continuity plans also which will completely change so that will all change um but so all clients will recognize the need pr agencies to quickly respond to situation so that will continue um we will help in building rebuilding brands <laughs> we'll help in building market competitiveness uh, market competitiveness reputation uh policy advocacy will increase uh i think fake news is a big big aspect and i think while we are seeing a big lot of challenges in the media today i think i actually think that media will gain traditional media will gain more credibility the format might change and we become more digital but they'll get more credibility because the fake news are creating today and uh, i think pr firms can play a large large role over there in preventing fake news digital services will of course go up um this whole crisis will be like an asset test for brands and people will really remember how you behaved during the crisis so it's a chance for a lot of companies to show empathy and humanity you know like like what mcdonalds is doing or what uh, some other company is doing i don't want to name all, all the companies but yeah and therefore brands are need to enlist firms to help to live up to their purpose you know um it's it's a huge opportunity on how we're going to build brands in the future to be honest uh, i just feel um the opportunity lies with us and it's up to us to really uh, grab the opportunity with a lot of our clients you know uh, do you share the sentiments do you agree that it's a lot of uh, positivity on the other side after this time so for the pr agencies uh, there is a lot of uh, work going to come in terms of brands repositioning themselves um i completely agree agree with nitin because i think uh, the risk, the engagement rule will change uh, you will see pr agencies becoming content creators uh, more so from a perspective of creating a lot of digital content on the knowledge side especially 
uh, we are seeing all this innovation started happening already. We are seeing that a lot of uh, our peers are actually looking at new ways of making their clients' communication go to other stakeholders. And uh, like I said that, um, uh, like earlier Nitin said, uh, there would be new opportunities that will emerge out of it. And those new opportunities would be that a lot of companies we would would want to come back very strongly as the as uh, I have a strong feeling that we are in for a there are different shapes of recession. We are in for a V shape recession where if you have actually seen a dip, you will see a massive rise as well. And in the time when the massive rise starts happening, that is when our uh, PR firms would come up very strongly because repositioning of the brand working in terms of also talking on how the brands have actually uh, been able to uh, sail through this COVID period. All this storytelling needs a communication of uh, public relation that it would be required for brands to utilize. So I think strongly, I strongly support what Nitin said. Udit, your thoughts? Udit, Udit. Uh, Udit, can you hear me? Uh, okay, I'll just wait. I think there's some audio. Uh, I'll, I'll come to you, Vineet, first. Uh, yes, Vineet, your thoughts on this? Yes, Vineet, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I thought it's for Udit. Uh, apologies. So, you know, uh, Nitin Kunal, bang on. Historically, if we really look at the years where the industries have slowed down, the biggest breakdowns have happened, PR has always grown. I uh, mean, so it's not right now. Uh, this is, of course, really in an unprecedented time. But uh, historically, also, if we really see whether it's a 2008 meltdown or 2012, whatever, you know, uh, PR has grown. Uh, and and I am strongly... Uh, you know, a believer that PR will come out stronger. Uh, you know, I'm, I was just reading uh, a story yesterday. Uh, it was in Harper Bazaar, and this is a China case study. China opened on Monday. Uh, the, the French brand uh, opened their stores on Tuesday. On a day one of that store opening, the overall China had a sale of $2.7 million. If I really convert, this is approximately 22 crore rupees sale in a day in China. And I'm saying, of course, it's China, but there is a positivity. There is a people. And I, I personally feel that things will come back and come back strongly for brands. And if it happens for brands, it's good for us. Uh, apart from that, of course, uh, because there are a couple of things which positives out of uh, the, the virus, uh, the, the whole COVID issue is one, we as a brand, as a company, as agencies, as people, we have become much better communicator. We have learned how to communicate effectively and what is the, and, and you know, even in organizations internally, we are communicating more, we are talking more. And I think that's gonna help us a lot in the long run. Nitin spoke about the traditional media versus digital. Of course, digital is the future. Everybody understand that, but Traditional is going to get more important importance because of the fake news. There's the only way where you can go back to a ref check, authenticate your news is the traditional way. And, and I think uh, that's going to go. There's, there is a bit of work we as an agencies and industries need to do on is this whole uh, awareness side of uh, online versus uh, the print. And I think uh, uh, the way things have moved, print will take some time to come back to the normal or will never be able to come back to the normal these these are the, you know the times will tell us this but i think the, from the client's point of view we need to look at doing some bit of awareness around uh, that issue and i think uh, otherwise post covid which i personally call it poco uh, is going to be a is going to be a, a, a bright time for pr industry it's just a question of time uh, how and when right, right. Udit, if you can hear me uh, i was coming to you uh, can you hear me? I hope you can. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you? Yes. Okay. So your thoughts on this? Yeah. Uh, I missed the question. All right. Okay. Right. Right. So so okay. The question was that uh, post the 
COVID uh, phase, uh, a lot of brands would try to reposition themselves. Do you think the PR agencies have a bigger role to play? Yes, yes, absolutely. PR, uh, I think, um, uh, I'm seeing a lot of uh, things happening from now itself. You know, but, and uh, as, as a mid-sized firm and a growing firm, we are working with a lot of startup clients, a lot of B2B segment clients. You know, I'm, I'm amazed with the amount of maturity and the amount of, uh, you know, uh, they, they're coming back to us and saying, you know, okay, they, they want us to handhold them and take us uh, from, you know, and help them to go through the, you know, uh, through the situation. So I believe we will play a very, very vital role. This is, this is because ultimately, uh, you know, brands have to communicate. They can't stop communicating at all, right? Uh, so today or tomorrow, PR will play, it is still playing and it, it will keep playing an important role for sure. And as people were saying, as my colleague was saying, you know, digital and, tra you know, sorry, traditional is, is going to be uh, there for sure. And digital agents, I, I have received, uh, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm disclosing this in, in the past three days, I've received like six uh, RFPs of, on digital media itself. That seems, uh, and, and traditional media as well. So that means that people are inclined to do PRs right now because they understand and they are preparing for post-COVID uh, and they understand that PR will only help them to you know, rebrand themselves and take the uh, entire image to a next level. So therefore, PR firms will play a very, very vital role for sure. Aman, your thoughts, quick thoughts on this. Yeah, uh, so I think, well, uh, every, as I said, uh, I think everybody knows that industry will continue. Uh, how it will shape up is something which uh, I, as of right now is uncertain because what we are witnessing is not something which has happened in the past. If I could look at, uh, and you know, uh, being in the healthcare uh, sector, the only thing which I could remember from my historical perspective is the, uh, the mid nineties uh, when the HIV AIDS was one of the big public health crises which happened and it changed the way uh, things looked. Uh, I think this is something which is, of course, much more bigger uh, and it will therefore have a much bigger implication. It will change the way people behave. It will change the way people's attitude are. And if people are the one which constitute the organization, people are the one who consume information, brands, or how they sort of look at the world. One of the first thing which we need to really think through is that as an as an institution and as an industry, what kind of a role can we play in bringing that change at the organization level? So the role will remain there. It will change. Uh, it will become a much more uh, insights driven. So from that perspective, this is the time to think about how we as an industry and how we as the members of the industry needs to emerge out of it and be much more relevant. Uh, for the companies who would be looking for services which will be very, very different from the way they are currently working with us. I just want to mention that you can uh, tweet uh, using hashtag Ibram webinar and also uh, post your questions on, on FB, they're live on FB as well. Taranjit, you want the same uh, question to you. Um, just your thoughts on this. How do you see the opportunity uh, post COVID for PR agencies? I think let's start with uh, during COVID. If you've not had a chance to grab a seat at the head table, now's your chance. Now is the chance for you to be the conscience of your client, you know, be the guiding light. You, this is where you establish your roots within the boardroom, right? So if you do that now, you've got a great future ahead with those clients that you currently retain. The ones uh, that you're looking at post COVID, study the market right now. It's imperative that you look at which are the industries that are developing right now, which are the ones that are going to be on standstill, which are the ones that are going to disappear and are going to be irrelevant from a customer's point of view, not just from the client's point of view. You have to look at the overall sentiment of the nation. Based on that, now is the time for you to start upskilling, right? If you use this time during the lockdown to upskill yourself, you've got a great future ahead. Be your quick thoughts. Sorry, your audio is not, uh, I can't, we can hear this. He's on mute. Yeah, I think what Udit and the others said is very true. You know, this is the time uh, companies are realizing, all brands are realizing that you can stop anything during a crisis, but you can't stop communicating with your end consumer and other stakeholders. 
communication is the key and that's where the role of a pr agency comes all the more uh, into prominence we are like the uh, we are we are more and more uh, we are becoming more and more like trusted advisors to brands and i feel post covid if uh, brands understand that this is where gradually the agency client relationship is emerging we are on a stronger wicket and what tarunjit said is true right now uh, most brands are realizing that there are different ways to communicate more and more verticals are emerging if you look at technology companies there are a lot of them which were considered b2b primarily earlier but now they are developing the consumer connect look at companies which are working in the virtual conferencing space in the telemedicine space suddenly they have established the consumer connect and they are understanding the value of proper communication and good content and that's where the you know these new verticals will emerge as opportunities for pr agencies in the future so the, after every crisis there's a you know there's a silver lining behind every cloud and i'm sure the agency will the agencies will also come out of this much more stronger so and uh, i just remind that keep the questions coming the next question is karan will be asking the next question Yes. Yeah, yeah, my idea. Of so, thank you, Rohel. Uh, Ritin, my question to you would be: What is the advice that you have for the PR practitioner and the agencies in terms of communicating in these tough times? Ritin, you are muted. Oh, sorry. Ritin, sorry, I'm back. I'm saying to be true to your clients. I think to uh, like I mentioned earlier, really give you know strong, excellent, uninterrupted service to uh, clients at this time. Um, two, I think uh, take care of yourself. I think this is a tough time. I think uh, we've seen uh, we've seen it in our um, whole industry that you know there are we it's a very young industry, right? Our median age is probably the mid twenties. Um, I think I'm the only one with grey hair in this family. I think so. Um, so um, you know, mental health is a big, big issue, right? And uh, I think we should all, and including, including us, all of us who are, uh, you know, CEOs of firms or leaders in in the industry, all look at how to manage that mental health piece um, uh, from 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 a from a from a business perspective. um that's two and third i think um agencies personally should look at their look should look at their look at internally how best they can look at cost structures look at structuring restructuring how to best uh you know do a much uh, get get really good get more more value out of the current system they that they work in you know whether it's cost cutting whatever it might be But the idea is to have good business continuity plans for yourself. So I'll bucket them to those three areas: clients, people, and business continuity for yourself. And Kunal, your thoughts? <clears throat> Same questions. Answer becomes repetitive, but I'll try and be different. <laughs> Give another version to it then. Innovative. Yeah. Your yeah. PR people. Yeah, I'll try <laughs> telling the story differently. Absolutely. Um, Uh, yeah actually if you uh, look at from a perspective of what do we do uh, and what do i recommend i would strongly recommend that uh, we need to be hyper uh, connected with our clients we need to help them understand uh, that work from home is more product productive we are trying to give them a seamless service so that's very critical so if you were talking to a client once in a week we should be talking every day that's one thing that i think uh, during this lock time lockdown period i strongly believe that that's should be the way and i don't think even post lockdown people are going to start working from offices so in terms of engagement with client needs to be very high um, i strongly feel that people are uh, doing a dual job right now uh, uh, when coming to office you were not responsible for your uh, household uh work but now uh, you're doing your household work as well as your mm -hmm. own uh, work so um uh, it sometimes become tiring uh, you might lose your cool so sometimes just breathe and uh, tell yourself that this will pass by uh, and uh, uh, two agencies i would say that um, all of us and we've been discussing at industry level that 
uh, we should uh, plan uh, our uh, business in such a way that we can protect all our people uh, to maximum level we things are uh, difficult right now and we can't think of uh, of a situation where we could let go of any of people who've been rallying with you for so many years uh, so uh, it's very critical that how do you plan your uh, business continuity without having any impact on uh, the job continuity of people so that is one uh, advice that while we plan uh, do plan do keep this in mind and um, also uh, i think uh, from an agency point of view what we are doing uh, is we are utilizing a lot of tech uh, uh, which are available at a very minimal cost to actually effectively make our remote working look like we are working as a team so whether it's a in house communication uh, that we use for, for in form of workplace or uh, the uh, management of time that we use from time doctor so basically there are a lot of tech that is available right now which can make your uh, uh, workforce effectiveness uh, uh, much more than what uh, you were doing at uh, regular days so uh, try and identify those technology try and implement that uh, it will help in your overall business uh, so that's all my side thank you so amit my question since you handle the indian and the international operations what advice do you have for the pr practices as well as the agencies of course well i think uh, right now survive keep your head above the water uh, ensure that you have scenarios mapped out for all possible timelines um, uh, i think if we just look at just about 115 days since the first corona virus was detected in december so if you look at from a timeline it's not really a very long timeline since this whole crisis started to pick up but the uh, the road ahead is much more longer uh, so whether this will remain for next 60 days whether it will remain for 90 days or whether it will go much more longer we need to uh, be much more agile we need to be dynamic and we need to work with any possible scenarios which may come along uh, our way and at that time to change our strategy to change the outlook and to change the way we operate uh, is something which needs to be taken care of uh, so that all aspects so you know and we have sort of talked about i think kunal also talked about the fact that uh, the primary thing for us is to ensure that as an industry uh, all members of the industry both at an organization and at the people level we are able to take along with us uh, in the best possible manner uh, manage the challenges which are uh, coming our way and it's something which is true not just for india so if you look at you know across the asia where we operate um, it's it's true uh, the market in southeast asia they went in the lockdown much earlier than india and we thought you know they will be sort of you know coming back but then you had the second wave which has started to emerge in mm. the southeast asian market so how this whole scenario will evolve i don't think uh, anybody can predict and therefore uh, to keep an eye on different scenarios uh is very very important what we may be saying today uh versus what may be happening next week can be two very different thing and i think that's one of the reasons why as an industry we are you know conversing with each other almost on a weekly we are not almost we are all conversing every week uh to look at the the change in the situation and therefore how do we need to adapt uh, ourselves to that thank you so that your thoughts or your advices for the people the practitioners and the agencies yeah so i think um, three things uh, one as an agency i would not say agency now i will say it firm and we have been talking about it from a long time right so i will request all my colleagues to not say agency it is a firm right now uh, so as a firm you know we will have to make up an excel sheet uh, and and you know look at the cost uh, look at all the fluff cost which were there which we were incurring get rid of it first thing because what is more most important is uh, is the talent right 
you will have to make sure that there is a business continuity and we keep the we keep retaining the talent for sure second for people i think uh, uh, this is the time to upgrade your skill right because this is not we are not going to do the same work which we were doing before covid the work is going to change and during covid also we can see there is a lot of uh, digital requirement which is coming up there are a lot of uh, you know policy uh, requirements also would come up now so i think uh, there has to be a lot of multitasking from people which has to happen for sure right uh, you can't be doing the same old stuff which you were doing before and people who were not understanding it have have i think have understand it far better now third is you know keep the again you know uh, the, the most important and which we which a lot of people forget is fitness i think for people it is very important to keep it because we are sitting at home and doing the same work every day uh, you know sleeping eating and uh, going uh, just opening the laptop and doing it i think what is more important is if we can follow a routine uh that that is very very important so three things uh, that that's something which i personally do i get up early uh, wh- how i was doing it before covid also and i'm doing it same way i am not uh, keeping this as a situation to keep eating or keep drinking i am i'm uh, following a routine for sure and same thing is what i have been talking to my colleagues as well in the, in the office so that's something which i believe everybody should do on a lighter note i think we should keep drinking whenever is possible <laughs> <laughs> i agree uh, vinith uh, your thoughts i mean vinith you are mute yeah. vinith yeah yeah so my friends have largely covered the whole gamut uh, mm-hmm. i have just two three points uh, 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 you know which on um, which has been my personal learning and i feel uh, uh it has changed quite a, quite a bit of the industry the way things are operating uh one i believe uh, very strongly the teams which are together during tough times uh will remain stronger and together for the longest time and this goes both for internal and external uh this also goes for the industry so the, from the prci point the statement is is i think we as a prci are very strong body now uh in last one month the way it has been operated so i repeating he saying that because i am really proud of that point number 2 the teams uh, internally very important and i think that's something which uh, so so one thing which we have done is earlier we used to have time sheets or stuff like that there are no pressures now there is more task oriented stuff which we are doing so people have their times i'm not uh, you know so so that's something which is working out well for us uh similarly with clients you be there with that you communicate more and everything so i think all of the those going to help but apart from that what is working well for us with clients is we are engaging with clients and asking them to do more for the society so there are two things which are really going to come out from or probably uh, uh, three things one media understanding the value of csr and uh, csr is not something which i would want to say but the public private partnership you know the way companies have come out come forward i think that's commendable there are some bit of stories which have come out there are some stories which have not come out and will never come out but we know on ground the the way things have changed and uh, the initiatives which have been taken and and i i think this will go for, for long it's not that the things will change overnight after the lockdown gets over i think so it's going to be a long way and post covid sorry the poco uh, will definitely definitely have a lot of uh the uh, public pr- uh, private partnerships going on and we'll get some good results second is the civil society i think this has also given us the value of civil society uh you know we have realized the kind of work which they have done on a grassroots and we as a communication people need to understand and probably work closely with and we 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 uh, many a times work as a as a conduit between these two uh, uh you know uh, sort of uh, organizations or these two industries which is civil society and the corporate and i think we need to really make sure that we work closely with all of them yeah that's what i have to say right now thank you thank you vinit so ruby karan uh, yeah. sorry before you go ahead i'll have to jump out of the I, call. i nitin nitin before you move i have a quick question uh, i will just jump this thing i yeah. have question which are coming in and this is very uh, i just want you to answer this one question i'm sorry can you hear me Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, so in terms, uh, this is by uh, Gina Ghosh uh, from Mumbai. Uh, she is asking, in terms of crisis communication, is there a 
detailed communication advisory being planned to sensitize brands on how to communicate sensitively on uh, digital platforms. Is, are you as an association planning an advisory? Uh, no, the association is not planning an advisory. Uh, what we have done is sent a letter for clients to all, we've sent a letter to all members, which they can send to the clients on how to react in this situation. And also uh, what, what they can, how they can work with agencies in this time. Um, I think all agencies have their own, um, their own way of uh, dealing with crisis communications. And I think uh, even at this time, we just, I think the overall message is to be sensitive, right? Because there have been many cases which we uh, read and heard there where brands have been a bit insensitive around the current situation. Uh, not only brands, but also influencers. So is there advisory going on how brands should communicate? No, that's left for members, but there is an advisory that's gone out for clients, uh, which covers broadly some of these four topics and also broadly covers on what kind of how agencies can or how, as Udit said, how firms can help or PR firms can help them. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you for your time, Nitin. Thank you so much, Vineet, Aman, Tarunji, Ruby. Uh, we we'll look Udit. forward to more such Thanks. engaging Thanks. sessions. Thank you. And then, Thanks. Thank you. So, so, Ruby, my question you already do, she at work and you have been, uh, you know, commune is doing stupendous work in terms of working out with some of the leading clients. So what is your advice in this uh, scenario of COVID and post COVID? And uh, what do you suggest agencies or, you know, the PR practitioner should uh, manage the crisis at this time? This hour. Ruby, Ruby, uh, you need to remove. Uh... So during COVID, one thing that we realized as uh, PR practitioners is how important remote communication is and how important it's for the workplace to be fluent in technology. So it's not like you always need a physical office and infrastructure. And I'm, think, I'm, I'm realizing that clients are also understanding this very well, that it's very easy to work with an agency Oh, remotely, it's not every time that we have to go running to a client's office. So that's one big learning that we've had. And I've realized that even the junior most members of the team, they are equally responsible. So, you know, they, they are equally good at their work if you give them that ownership and responsibility. But one thing that we should also understand as PR practitioners more is that, you know, during these times, there are three things that we need to remember. One is we have to be responsive. You cannot ever tell a client or a consumer that you can that you cannot answer a question or you are not available so these these are the times that you understand that you always have to be responsive and secondly you have to be innovative so covid has taught us ways to innovatively send out a message to uh, the media and the media to our end consumers so uh, people have understood that you cannot just go and barge the meat bother the media with any and every story pitch you have to uh, find an angle whether the pitch goes as an impact story around covid or as a future impact story around covid etc and you uh, position your story accordingly when you're pitching to the journalist all in all we understand that we also have to be come come across as being empathetic and have a human touch when we are dealing be it with clients be it with the media, et cetera. So we should come across as sensitive individuals also. And I think uh, the sensitive aspect of communication where we are working together to build that image of, you know, uh, that uh, good corporate image of trust for our consumers amongst the larger audience, that is something that COVID has made us realize that uh, corporate reputation is much bigger and corporate image is much bigger than day-to-day -day communication. And it's made us realize the importance of having a proper communication and content strategy to uh, take out this message. Thank you. So Tarunji, your views and your advice. Thank you. Uh, so I think pretty much everybody said almost everything, but I'd like to draw everybody's attention on one of these jokes that has been floating around on WhatsApp. Now is the time we get to know which are the meetings that could have been a phone call. Yeah. So this is the time, I think my advice would only be for agencies while everybody's already addressed clients and teams, etc. If you ever wanted to pivot, this is the time. Yeah, for the longest amount of time, I think for the last 10 years, we as PR professionals have been pushing our clients, telling them, 
digital is the way forward digital is the way forward but everybody wants kitty front which kab aayega yeah so this is the time for us now to push them and let them know what the importance of digital is right i think they are also opening up to the fact they are opening up to the fact that oh yeah it is possible and it's possible to reach out to your target audience much better on digital as compared to traditional media while traditional media has its own set of challenges right now uh, i think we as pr professionals will this is the right time for us to help our clients draw the balance second uh, if we ever wanted to change our business models this is the time to do that right uh, the work from home policies that people have uh, a certain number of agencies have a lot of them have kind of jumped on to it and started figuring out how that has to be done how accountability has to be put into place uh, where that's concerned um so this is the time for us to relook at all the policies that we have and see where is where and what is it that we can cut down on and make sure that we sustain our businesses at this point yeah so i uh, want let's go to the audience questions yeah. now we have a lot of questions coming in mm -hmm. and let's keep tweeting using the hashtag people and webinar you can also post rohel uh, karan i do also need to hop off in another 5 minutes uh, okay. so, so yeah. i will i'll come to you first uh, i'll ask you a question um the question is from um, sabi khana uh, it's for you um, mr gupta how will marketing communication playbook look like for clients post covid well i think uh, the post covid the marketing communication has to be focused on a couple of things um i think the first is the uh, the stakeholders will change uh, the employees as the brand ambassador and employees as a key stakeholder will emerge so therefore how you communicate with your employees will be essential i think the other group which usually was never thought about is but becoming very important now is your business partners so specifically for the industries which are across into manufacturing and who needs business partners to ensure that things get delivered so how do you really work closely with your business partners uh, and communicate with them uh, will be an essentiality the uh, the reputation and the repositioning of the uh, the brand uh, post covid and based on what the new world looks like uh will be uh, another essentiality which needs to be done um and uh, and finally i think it would be uh, all about that how do you create ecosystems where if repeat when you know when the dependence is on uh, uh, on the on the media which is outside uh, there will be a lot of focus on owned media so companies and the brands will be really looking at investing into creating uh a lot of social and digital uh, channels creation of the own content which they could therefore uh, share with the communities uh, their own brand communities uh, this is the kind of a thing which will be really uh, which i believe will be happening now onwards till the time the new scenario of post covid or poco s vinith has been saying i will stick to that poco <laughs> thank you perfect um okay I'm, thank you guys thank you for the time about Thank you, Karan. Thanks, Roy. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Kunal, Vinith, Ruby, Ranjit. Kunal, uh, my question to you is: uh, so right. In this, uh, everybody gets a different question, so that is one thing. Uh, Kunal, for you, this is from uh, Pra Pramiti Sapru. She's asking, uh, what are the different ways in which we can uh, create uh, faith uh, within uh, our stakeholders? You know, especially the clients you know, during these times. What are the best ways to maintain that? relationship that we have built before this covid happened with them and to keep it strong so your audio is missing okay it's very similar to what um, uh, in any crisis we do we need to first actually uh, uh, beyond uh, uh, beyond one is that we acknowledge that there is a situation which is unprecedented and which is what needs to be done with uh for with every organization that uh, you you actually acknowledge that there is a problem and uh, with the acknowledgement there is also a fact that uh, like every human evolve with time every business evolve with time so there will be evolution that will be required during this crisis period so that what is that evolution plan do you have a plan to it is very much uh, required for the leadership to actually convey to their different stakeholders mm -hmm. 
and also uh, talk about your human side of the business so for example uh, a lot of companies are coming right now out uh, to help uh, government to help uh, citizen and also provide uh, whatever support they they can uh, in this testing time so one is uh, acknowledgement of the issue second is a plan on on how you are evolving the business uh, so that your stakeholders should be engaged and this your stakeholders should understand that there is a plan uh, for uh, dealing with the situation and third is how are you are responding to this particular crisis uh, and how do you are contributing to this particular crisis to the overall society these are three three critical things which will help your each stakeholders which are around you to have faith in you and to have much more faith uh, on the organization um i want to we share the twitter handle which is hashtag uh, i want to come to you udit uh, can you hear me yeah yeah i can there's some connection problems happening to hell uh, i've just messaged you here. so so the question for you for you is from snake gupta Uh, the question is: What are the new kind of digital PR platforms uh, or tools that have emerged and may become relevant in the coming times? Sorry, well, uh, uh, the question is from Snake Gupta. Uh, what are the new kinds of digital PR platforms or new tools you know, that we have discovered recently during this period that can become stay relevant for the community? i think every social tool has to be relevant for the coming times right it is it is just about communicating right uh, if 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 i am i am able to communicate uh, via facebook via twitter via linkedin and i'm reaching direct to the target audience that's that's the tool to go for right it it depends on what your strategy is what what do you want to achieve out of a communication strategy so uh, i believe um, what i i meant about upgrading the skills was that everybody needs to be now become an integrated we as a firm need to become an integrated firm rather than just being a traditional firm because uh, uh, by becoming integrated firm we are solving the business objectives of the client right so that is more most important uh so i think every social media tool is important you can't have a categorize that okay this facebook is important social media twitter or linkedin every tool could play a very very important role in the coming times and this this these tools are currently playing an important role for sure right uh, look at look at uh, we are not receiving newspapers we are receiving online copies of newspaper all the new age media has become important relevant i have seen your story going to do a lot of live sessions now in 42 is doing you guys are doing it so i think every everything nothing is going to stop but we have to adopt to the challenges right we we need to come up with a solution and that's what we are doing in, in a normal circumstance we would have this panel uh during ipr cca in an event and discussing about different things right over here we are connected and we are talking to 100 odd people so these are these are new tools right so we we have uh we have quickly uh, adopted to the new tools and technologies uh and uh, humans are very intelligent they will come out with a solution for sure and we are trying to come up thank you udit so vinita i have a question for you this is from tanishk adhaulia uh she's asking um, something about uh, you know there is a series of layoff happening across industries a lot of new talent is on the market on the block but because there is a freeze on hiring some of them are feeling uh, disheartened and demotivated so what is your uh, you know thoughts about this and what do you what is your message to these people out there so i think the only message right now is be positive mm. and uh, Uh, as the industry i believe uh, uh you know uh, pr industry has not done any retrenchment right now uh -huh. and we are very conscious about it all our restructuring what we have done is is to keeping in mind to make sure that all our current employees are sustained and retained so that has been the core approach as far as the industry is concerned and i believe it's commendable the way we all have come together to take certain calls that's point number 1 <clears throat> as far as new jobs are concerned they are on the horizon right now they are not there but another probably of 4 to 8 weeks once the markets open up there are uh, new jobs going to come up people we we also have delayed our hiring plans so it's not that we have shelved those hiring plans so you need to just keep waiting uh, be positive 
and also if you can really do is enhance your skills this is the time and this is the what we as a company we are doing we are putting more you know there are resources it is time where resources are crunched but there are always things available to train so we are doing a lot of in house training and i i believe <clears throat> very important for all the future employees who are looking for jobs to enhance their skills this is the time they know what is required and uh, and i think uh, udit rightly said the future is also for integrated communication and i think uh, uh, that integration has to come in there could be and this is my personal feeling because uh, in whatever by the time we finish it would be one and a half months of uh, lockdown no, inside no. the house there could be little fatigue digital fatigue which will come in into all of us and which is probably temporarily you know okay. i'm sure uh, you would want to say enough of facebook or enough of uh, uh, twitter and once the markets open up you would want to really go back enjoy that uh, working from office and the teams and everything so there could be a digital fatigue initially but i think uh, the the lifestyle has going to change uh, drastically people going to consume more and more content digitally and it could be online as a news platform so even if the traditional media online platforms or or otherwise if we really look at uh, uh, all the social media platforms there are the new ways of uh, uh, reaching out uh, as is, 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 is all of them going to be very very uh, but i have a advice for people uh, i have a advice for people who are fresh who are coming out fresh out of college uh, you should see every crisis as an opportunity every uh-huh. time when uh, the industry is going through or an economy is going through a recession you see emergence of many startups who become billion dollar 10 years later whether it was flipkart or uh, any other company they started in the peak of recession uh-huh. so i would uh, say uh, you have an opportunity you are from a communication industry you have an opportunity to become a single person media shop uh, which uh-huh. my uh, my dean used to say uh, when i picked up mass communication okay you can become content creator right now you can actually try and actually utilize this time in becoming a content creator and content of your choice which is of your area of interest you never know uh, you might find yourself uh, a, a career uh, that you've created for your own self by becoming an influencer uh, in the space because if you'll see the report influencers engagement has actually gone much higher during this covid time and uh, their effectiveness is much higher people are looking at the content that the influencers are making so use this time uh, if there there are no jobs be the job creator yourself uh-huh. uh, utilize the time effectively i have a Thank question you, for uh, tarun ji yeah um, so i'd like to add to the job question um if you are looking for a job right now then you need to study the market right study the market and figure out which are the agencies that are handling verticals that are doing well in covid and will do well post covid it's your responsibility to make sure that you study the market and apply to those agencies those agencies are hiring yeah second when you go for a job help them understand what is it that you bring to the table that will help them make profit and move ahead with their clients what is the expertise that you bring to the table a job will not just land on your you know on your lap you have to prove to the employer why you deserve that job so upskill yourself make sure that you are clear in your communication in terms of what you bring to the table i have a question for you uh, this is from shankar bhartwaj uh, he is asking what should organizations from real estate keep in mind uh, what kind of pr and social media strategies should be followed by those players right now you in the real estate market right Yes. Okay. So in the real estate market, one of the biggest issues that is happening right now is uh, the migrant laborers, right? Uh, so if, as a real estate client, um, you know you can't really talk about a new property, uh, that will be a little bit of a being tone deaf. If you can address the migrant labor issue, if you can make sure that that is something that your client can address, and be sensitive, be kind, and be empathetic towards them. i think you've got a lot of need for good media stories that will be relevant to the media right now 
now is not the time to launch a new campaign now is the time to be kind karana has a question for ruby yeah so ruby so i have i have a question uh, by uh, you know chetale uh, sorry this is actually was so tarunji so you know there is a, a question by manpreet kaur uh, uh, asking you what do you think about the fake news that is spreading all around even on the media group that media is losing job and everyone is facing but half of the time it's rubber are just scaring people although we covered it just now about what the industry is doing that is one second question that i want to ask is that you know there are so many digital session and discussion are happening on these kind of platform so how do you think such discussions are relevant and how do you on the other hand since you're doing client servicing how do you you know convince your client that this is the time because most of the time i've been hearing news that some clients have even stopped their pr campaigns and activity so how are you convincing your client that this is exactly is the time that they should be emphasizing more on pr outreach than you know kind of taking a back step you know uh, in our answer to your first question you are right uh you know uh, when we as pr practitioners uh, whenever there is a negative news about our client in the media the first thing we do is call up the media house and say why didn't you check me why didn't you validate why didn't you take my point of view so and uh, so uh, spreading fake news in any form through a whatsapp or anything is as dangerous as the virus we all know so uh, as responsible pr practitioners we should be very careful when we get an alert like this instead of immediately forwarding it to uh, to our friends or our team members should just do a quick check with uh, our media friends as to whether this news is true or not that way at least we can act as responsible pr practitioners and partners of the media partners with the media instead of creating panic in the industry so because if anything happens in the media industry there is a repercussion in the pr industry also so at least being responsible about that and being sensitive and humane that there are people at the other end whose whose livelihoods and reputations are being impacted would really help in answer to your second question how we convincing clients you know uh, so uh, clients are increasingly also realizing uh, we we are trying to make clients understand uh, and i think most of them are realizing that to be relevant to their audience their consumers at this point of time they can't stop communicating they have to find the right news peg and try to communicate with the client also a lot of our clients especially in the technology space and we do work with uh, some brands which uh, you know which have not really been in the forefront in terms of news they are realizing it's a good time to build that human connect with uh, with uh, the consumer so uh, we are customizing the messaging accordingly as well as uh, trying to see that they get that trust uh, with the consumer so a lot of csr campaigns are happening and uh, we trying to build up that uh, human image for them so we work with an industry body and we trying to see talk about how that industry body is impacting lives of people during uh, this crisis how they are a lifeline for the uh, for uh, for all of india during this point of time so i think clients are also understanding and they are also becoming open open to newer forms of communication so instead of traditional press conferences they are also getting open to webinars etc uh, for communicating with the media and other stakeholders thank you ruby so rohel let's wrap up uh, yes thank you everyone i mean we thank you have a lot of questions but uh, uh, in the interest of time we have to call it uh, we have ended here and thank you everyone thank you uh, everyone who logged in and watched this and to those who uh, sent the thank questions. you everyone for taking out your precious time that to on a working day <laughs> thanks thanks for thanks, <laughs> thanks karan Yeah. You know, interesting is I could see more than uh, almost at a peak. It was uh, uh, approximately 150 people who were part of this, and uh, I think it's pretty impressive. I'm happy, uh, you know, and I'm sure uh, we all uh, have learned something out of this uh, session. And yeah, I've uh, yeah. Thank you. It's been a wonderful session for everybody. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. May I want to take you. your uh, hashtag Coco and. Make it popular now. <laughs> yeah, make it popular. Please, yeah. <laughs> please also make E for M. Please also make hashtag E for M P R webinar. You know, uh, famous. Let's make hashtag Poco as an Indian P R industry. Uh, uh, you know, sort of a gift to the world. Hashtag Poco. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs>
Take care. Thank you. 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 Thank you.